Okay, uh, first little video here. Uh, we're just gonna have a look at assembling a harness and just the basic equipment uh, just for basic maneuvers. Okay, so. Uh, when we're first getting started, um, you know, we've got our rope access harness here. We've got a few basic, uh, you know, bits of equipment that we're going to have on it. Uh, just for simple basic maneuvers, nothing complex, uh, just basic level one stuff. So, I've got, uh, you know, an example of a rope access, uh, you know, harness here. Uh, we're basically looking at shoulder or chest straps. We have a waistband, let me just kind of sort of shake that out a little bit, okay, a waistband and then two leg loops sort of uh, hanging down underneath all of that, okay, so it's basically a full body harness with a few attachment points. Um, you know, uppermost we have a full arrest attachment point, sternal, we have one at the back which is the dorsal uh, full arrest attachment point. Back around to the front, so yep, sternal full arrest point. Uh, this is our chest descender. Um, underneath we have another D-ring, which is our work positioning uh, attachment point or our uh, ventral, okay? And then most harnesses will also typically have some uh, side D-rings, you know, you know, as well. Uh, in terms of everything that we're doing, we're not really making a lot of use of those, okay? But, you know, if we're using pole straps, then that's where they'd come into play. Okay, so. Putting a harness on, first things first. Let's make sure our straps are all nice and loose so we can you know, step into it. Okay, I've actually got that sitting up fairly straight. I've got the shoulder straps just sort of hanging over my shoulder there. Me, personally, I tend to, where possible, uh, where the harness design allows, I actually like to have the leg loops undone, just makes it a lot easier to step into. And if I'm holding it like so, I can pretty much just shrug the shoulder straps off, step in through the waistband, bring that up nice and high. We can then lift the shoulder straps in up and over, get everything sort of sitting in place there. Everything's nice and loose, so I can just go ahead and just get all the buckles joined together. Got that a bit looser to start off with. Now that I'm into it to this point, we're just going to get the waistband tightened up first. Okay, get that done, tightened up nice and evenly. The waistband, by the way, is positioned roughly around the top of your hips, so it's not going to be squishing in too much and it's not going to be sitting too low and make your top heavy. So I've done the waistband. Make sure we just get any tails tucked away as well. Okay, I'll turn my attention to the leg loops. We'll firm those up a little bit. They don't have to be super tight. Uh, you know, we do a lot of climbing and moving around. Uh, so just reasonably firm. If you can get a hand through, um, you know, um, that's, you know, a general uh, sort of guide to, you know, go with, okay? Maybe a little bit tighter or looser depending on your personal comfort. Okay, but waistband, leg loops. And then we turn our attention to the, uh, you know, chest straps. You know, again, simple, straightforward <coughs> buckle system. We'll just pull the strap through to get that firm and then tighten it up. Okay. Once I am about to actually climb a set of ropes and leave the ground, I will have this done up a bit firmer. But while I'm just sort of staying on the ground, I generally have that a bit looser just so it doesn't pull on the shoulders quite as much. Okay, but still have that reasonably firm just for now. Right, so that's a harness on. Moving on from there, we need to put some equipment on. Uh, generally, the first thing I'm always going to look at is uh, tying cow's tails in. So length of dynamic rope, we've got about uh, you know uh, you know about three and a half meters uh, length you know here. This one length of rope I'll end up tying two cow's tails out of. So I've already got that folded in half. That means I can identify the midpoint, and we're just going to go ahead and tie an overhand knot on one side of the midpoint. 
spin that around so I can do exactly the same motions to put a, uh, an overhead knot on the other side. Okay, so that's those ones there. Or that can hang down. We're going to take an end of the rope, pass that through the ventral D ring. And then what I'm going to do is what we call an overhand follow through. So I've just inserted the end of the rope uh, into the initial overhand knot that I tied. And I'm just following that around until it pops out the far end. Okay, so basically what I'm looking at there, and I'll go through it again with the other uh, uh, side, is two strands going in together, two strands exiting out together, and whichever way I turn this knot, both strands are looking parallel and side by side all the way around. So that's the first one done there. Turn my attention to the opposite end. Let's poke that through the same way. Bring that through until that overhand is you know, close and let's go through and follow uh, that through again as well. Move that aside, make a little bit of a gap, poke that in. We'll just wrap and follow the shape around and then just pop it out the far end of that. Okay, yep, our ends are still hanging roughly even there. Okay, at the end of a, the cast towers, we're gonna tie what we call a barrel knot. So let's fold that right in half. One hand just holding that sort of midpoint there. And I'm going to wrap the tail around once, wrap it around a second time. As I bring it up for the third time, we drop that down through the center and I'm just pulling that back towards myself there. Same concept, I have two strands parallel going in, I have two strands parallel and together coming out. The shape of the barrel knot, it's a bit of a crossover on one side, and it's nice and parallel on the other side. Okay, then I was gonna go ahead and do exactly the same thing. With my second cow's tail there, okay? Okay. At the end of each of the cow's tails, let's go ahead and throw in the carabiner to the end of each one. Now, I am just letting all the cow's tails hang down for a, for a moment, and there is a reason for that. Once I've kind of got all the barrel knots cinched up against the carabiners, the final thing I'm gonna do here with the cow's tails is I do just want to just sort of tension or seat them a little bit, okay? So I'm just gonna ensure that I've maintained the shape of the barrel knot there, and then just pop my weight down just a little bit just to sort of uh, tension them up just a little bit. And I'm gonna do that to all four cow's tails. And then what I'll do for the moment is just clip those to either side. So side D-wing is coming useful for clipping your cow's tails back too. Okay, so on the end of one of the cow's tails, I'm going to need a couple of other bits of equipment. So we have here foot loop. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab one of those cow's tails, take the foot loop, Clip that onto there. I'm also going to need a hand jammer as well. We're just going to go onto that same cow's tail. And just so the whole lot's not dangling and flapping around, I'm just going to sort of clip that up together there. And then that in itself uh, can be clipped back as a whole unit. Okay? So, um, another piece of equipment that we'll need is a basic uh, descender. Okay? So, 
the sender with the carabiner. I'm going to go ahead and take that, clip that nice and central onto my ventral D-ring, uh, just in between the uh, two sets of cow's tails there. Okay, that'll pretty much stay in place there the whole time. So, the final couple of things that we'll need is a backup device whole multitude of backup devices out there. This one is an ASAP lock, uh, as well as a backup device. It's classed as a mobile fall arrester. Uh, so that means, because it has a fall arrest capacity, it does need to be attached to your sternal or your fall arrest attachment point. Okay, it does kind of hang down there, can be a bit of a nuisance. So one thing that we can do with that, just grab the spare carabiner, let's just clip that around to the side and that'll stop it sort of flapping around and just uh, getting in your way a bit, okay? And uh, what can come in also very handy a lot of the time is a second uh, backup device. So here we have another type, duck. All I'm doing is, is pulling that uh, little uh, arm or lever through, uh, clipping it onto my cow's tail. And then I generally put that, or recommend putting that across to the left-hand side along with the initial backup device that I've got. So overall, basic equipment that I'm looking at, I have my chest ascender, which will help me go up a, set, uh, up a rope. My hand jammer with my foot loop will help with that process. My descender will be for coming down a rope. And then on the second rope or the backup line, I've got a choice of two backup devices that I can use. And that's basically our bare minimum uh, you know, kit that we have.